58 seconds, it should be possible to do 58 seconds on gesturitis without doing a single gesture. In fact, uh, I'm cheating because I'm leaving my hands out of shot. That's a clever way for the presenter to go. Unless, of course, he or she is so compelled to gesture that the hands keep nipping in and out of shot and they have to adjust the frame. Um, there are some people who must be paid, famous people, who must be paid by the gesture because they do so many. And within a very few seconds of the opening of the shot, uh, they can have earned a fortune by just being paid by the um, Always remember that less is more. Is that a little theatrical? Well, let's look into the physicality and the psychology of gesture and see what we can do about it, because we're on display. There's a piece of YouTube of Vivian Lee being interviewed, and she holds a cigarette. I don't remember her smoking it at all, but she's very poised, and this cigarette is her anchor. Psychologically, it's her anchor, because she realises she wants to look poised and unassailable, and yet a little vulnerable, uh, able to laugh at herself and laugh at the interviewer. And I'm improvising, of course, and I'm in quotation marks, and I don't want to look like a quotation of myself. And it's a cluttered background, so I need to be simple. Um, if we knew how to do the real truth of oneself, of ourselves, and then fake it for the camera with a cracked presentation and acting. Don't shoot the messenger, a famous saying. Of course, we are shooting the messenger. And are you going to be transfixed by the messenger or the message? I can't make myself invisible. Um, I'm going to be here, so I must be a conduit, I think that's the word, a conduit for the content. Um, you could probably see, if I just angle the camera, that my jeans are paint-stained. That's because I'm an artist. And um, in a minute I'm going to tell you all about this painting behind me, these paintings, um, and try to make it an object lesson in presentation. <laughs> uh, of course, this last little bit is meant to have been an object lesson in presentation, but I was too busy presenting to think of that. George Bernard Shaw said that people would pay good money to look at on the stage what they wouldn't look at twice in real life, like a lamppost or a taxi. Um, the most intellectual of uh, playwrights put taxis and lampposts on the stage for that very reason. Now look here, look here. In the, I might mix all the colour, look, the clutter. But of course, some people look at streets when they're in them, and some people paint streets. Why do we like to look at paintings of streets when we see streets all the time? This man, this man, for example, this man, let's get him into focus. I have to take a piece of sandpaper and um, you see the paint um, builds up this acrylic paint. And um, I'm going to have the sandpaper in there so that I can start picking up. It's like, uh, it's, it's like doing another take when you're making a presentation. It's all presentation. The dog owner's face was a failure. Very hard to do what is a kind of miniature within landscape. Make a virtue of the way the way would paint and brush will behave when guided by uncertain technique. Vision? <laughs> My eye got so used to his sunken neck that it accepted it. I look at the banality of the whole scene, or rather the banality of my treatment of the scene, and think it's all been done. Utrillo did street scenes magically. How? Sometimes from postcard views. And did approximation freely, not laboriously as I do. That's why people don't paint anymore, except weekend painters like me, and a few 
a few Royal Academicians who still do representational naturalism, I suppose one would call it. Ah, well, fail again. Fail better, as Beckett said. Some streets are more worth looking at than others, of course. Uh, this is very near to the one I painted. And uh, perhaps you remember Costa? Sequel. Sequel to our famous blog on Costa. You can see I haven't really gone a lost uh, chunk of time on art. But I'm playing here a part. Do you think I should do something about my posture? It's a relief for me not to be on camera, letting pictures do the work. It means I have considered what I am saying, written it, taken time to write it, so there's not the strain of improvising. I only have to make this sound as if I am improvising, not reading. I'm amazed that I manage these eyes. They are small scale within the face. They have vital detail. Why did I find the face of the dog owner? so hard to do. I don't think I've failed better much. Perhaps I need a better quality brush. My own face in the mirror in Ian Glenn's portrait is even uh, smaller. I, I seem to have had better quality paint here. At least I could decide what I looked like and concentrate on that, rather than worrying about how the camera was picking up blemishes and unflattering shadows. Tying up leaves and gesture, I remember going to see an open-air concert at Kenwood, and I stretched in a gesture my thumbnail at arm's length so that it was just next in my eyeline to the distant conductor and he was as big as my thumbnail and yet I could tell I can imagine how small his hands were at that distance and yet I could tell by the way he moved them even at that distance and that scale exactly what they were expressing to the orchestra well, I can't manage anything like that in paint. But in the end, the advice of the 19th century actor Henry Irving is the key. You must be moved by the impulse of being. Mm -hmm.